I know the church bells are ringing and the saints are singing because Greenleaf is back. <laughs> Hallelujah. But did y'all see the end? That was a bunch of... <laughs> Okay, so we can clearly see that um, Greenleaf wasn't wasting no time. They got right to the shit as soon as it started. Soon as it opens up, we can see that Mac is out of jail and Grace is not having it. She is upset. She has gone to the extent of doing sex offender flyers and putting them on everybody's cars. She is trying to ruin his life because clearly he is on a vengeance to ruin Bishop's life by revealing... Um, the whole situation with the fire of the first church to get the new Calvary that they're in now. If you don't know what happened with Mac, you need to go back and do your research because I'm not going to walk you through it. This is not the Sylvan Learning Center, okay? Bishop, of course, he's dealing with the aftermath of the fire because to get out of jail, I'm guessing Mac has given up Bishop and that whole entire story and he got his father along. And I'm like, whoo, like I'm getting nervous for Bishop because I'm like, Sir, like, it's gonna come down. It's gonna rain on your head. In the words of Little Mo. Um, so I'm like, uh, uh, uh. Bishop finally admits to Grace that, um, the fire from the first Calvary wasn't an accident. And he also reveals that, you know, I really didn't know that, um, the man was, you know, down there. I did not know. Lady May. Lady May, she stepped in and she did what she had to do. In the first season, she was really displaced with him. Like, I don't want you here. She was really rude. And I was like, damn. Like, I understand people don't have the best relationships with their parents. But, damn. Like, you ain't got to do all of that. And we see in the second season, um, she goes to see him because she needs a favor. Well, in the, at the beginning of the scene you don't really know what she's there for. I'm guessing she just went to see him because he was sick and near death. But it turns out that she needs a favor. And he keeps saying, you were always so sweet to me. You were always so sweet to me. And I'm like, what? My wheels begin to turn. Maybe there is something, you know, he's alluding to. And then he leans up and kisses her. And you can see on her face that she's uncomfortable and that it's not the first time that that's happened. I said, oh, hell no. That was too much, Greenleaf. I was not expecting that. Like, why you think I got my cross on? Because, whoo, that was a lot to take in. Daddy been... Ah! Because he had something to do with the DA investigating Bishop about the fire in the first place, his refusal to testify made the DA drop the case. So she stepped in to help her husband at whatever cost. And it just sucks that she had to do that. These many years later, she's still having to be sweet to daddy. And it's like, ugh, that is disgusting. Charity. Charity and Kevin are still dealing with the aftermath of, you know, Kevin revealing that he has feelings toward the same sex. In all of that... Some kind of way, Charity slips and falls and, you know, falls on her stomach and one of the babies end up dying. So out of the twins that she was initially pregnant with, now she only has one. So we see that play out and um, Kevin is attending the Pray the Gay Away meetings and he wants Charity to come. But Charity is like, I don't see a need. You know, I don't even feel like you can pray the gay away. So, you know, to do. With Charity, um, I love her character and the contrast between how she treats Kevin and how she treats Carlton and his husband. Because it shows that she doesn't have a problem with gay people. She just didn't want it to be, you know, thrust on her like this. And I can understand, you know, I have honestly been in a situation like that. Poor girl didn't know what hit her. <sighs> it's not you. Well, it is you, but... It's not you. Moving right along to Jacob. Jacob must be feeling good from his head to his shoe. Know where he going and he know what to do. Tidied up his point of view. Because Jacob got a new attitude. When Jacob hit that stage, he was a brand new person. And I love how they wanted us to pay attention to that. Because you could see the characters reacting like, Jacob? Like, he was really acting like a new person. 
Cut to Skanks pulling a damn rabbit out of his motherfucking hat to say, I'm going to stay at the first triumph in downtown, but we're going to make this triumph too, and you're going to be the pastor. And you could see in that moment that not even Jacob was expecting that. He was like, huh? You serious? Like, it was a surprise to everybody. And Bishop was enraged. Come to find out that Skanks is the son of the man who was killed in the fire. So his whole vengeance is, I'm going to get you for what you did to my daddy. So there's that. And I'm like, damn. Mavis. Mavis is really depressed from losing the um losing her club. She is really depressed from losing her bar and um she has turned to alcohol. So now she's an alcoholic and it's just getting worse by the second because she has this younger guy that she's dating who is a musician. She calls herself trying to help him and co-manage his career. But he has an addiction to oxy. She just called it oxy. I knew when they first introduced that he had this addiction that it was going to affect her. Oh, bruh. I know you had something to do with having that young boy play your boyfriend. Let me find out you didn't dip with a skip with the curly flip, okay? Ah. The church is mad because the gay um, praise and worship leader has gotten married and he not hiding it. I'm glad that they put this in there because every church just about got a gay person worship leader, but they want to preach. Man should not lay with man. Leave it alone. If you ain't going to talk about the guitar player that's fucking every girl in the choir, leave it alone. If you ain't going to talk about the deacons that's fucking with these little girls, leave it alone. And what really kills me about these church folks that got issues with gay people is, and the lady said it, she was like, we have no problem saying this to Lady May. Lady May ain't who you got the motherfucking issue with. Bring the issue to the problem. You feel so strongly about it. Don't talk amongst your friends, boo-boo. Let me know how you feel. But they won't do that. And you could see that when, you know, um, Carlton, the praise and worship leader, he was walking up to, you know, the stage to go ahead and lead the, the church in worship. And Kyle gave him a kiss on the cheek. And they were just like, like, you could see that they were, you know, their disposition behind it. And it's just like, y'all not going to say this to his face. Run up and get done up. Speaking of, the husband of the praise and worship leader calls it. It's Kyle Barker. I know I keep calling that man Kyle Barker because not only do I not know his real name, but I don't know his name on this show either. So y'all will deal. Me and my cousin was just talking about you, Kyle, and it's really good to see you working because we were saying that the last time we had saw you was um, Final Destination. The big debacle at the end between Mavis and Lady May when Mavis laid it all out and was like, you was daddy's little girl while... I was getting treated like shit from mama. And the reason why the mama was treating Mavis like shit was because she knew what the daddy was doing with Lady May and was pissed off about it and was taking all her shit out on Mavis. Mm, this shit is good. That's what um season two, episode one gave me. Um, y'all keep it locked because we're going to talk about it. Oh, and I thought that last week was the season finale of Star, but it turns out it wasn't. So I still got one video to give y'all because I told my cousin I wasn't going to do it. And he was like, you a liar. I hate when people say they're going to do something and don't do it. So I'm going to give y'all the video. You happy, Dunye? Bye, y'all.